Today I'm going to have a look at the new Fountain Pen Revolution Himalaya pens. Uh, I, I like Fountain Pen Revolution, a nice website that sells Indian pens. And they have their own lineup of pens, most of which are very affordable. And I, uh, I have always been very satisfied with their performance. And something that I know makes people very enthusiastic about all this is that a lot of these pens also come with a flex nib option. Flex is incredibly hot. It, it has been for a few years now and it continues to be very, very hot. Uh, so I, affordable flex is always something that's, um, that's very interesting. I'm going to cover the parts of these pens. I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then I'll do a writing sample. The pens were sent to me by Kevin from FPR, so Fountain Pen Revolution. Uh, I appreciate it. He sent me two finishes. Uh, I'm going to focus on, you know what, I'm going to focus on this one uh, just because the other one is inked up and this one is not, so I can flick it around a bit more, very violently. But the same pen, just different finish. Okay, past the pen. Top of the pen, finial, same material as the cap. I always like that. This is a very nice dark blue material, iridescent, so nice marbling there, which I think works very well. Simple clip, clip works, no issues with the clip. Nice and springy, and yet you don't bend it very easily. A simple chrome colored center band uh, with nothing on there. Barrel, same material as the pen, and again, I, I do think, I do like that material. And then at the end of the barrel, there's nothing. If you just, just if you want to see the other one, uh, also a very pretty material. A bit warmer, because it's a nice orange, but um, yeah. there you have it. Okay. Cap unscrews. Section, same material as the barrel. I always think that's bonus points, because it looks very nice. Threads here, cut well, are not particularly sharp. Uh, I like that. This is their regular fine nib, uh, but you can also, as I said, you can get it with flex nibs. So I wrote this down. You can uh, get, I think, a, um, uh, a fine and a medium, and then if you, uh, then it's 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 twenty nine dollars for the pen. If you want a broad, a 1.1, uh, sorry, a one millimeter stub or a flex nib, it's plus three dollars. So we're talking thirty-two dollars for a flex pen, uh, which I don't think is particularly terrible. Section simple, tapers down, flares out a bit. Classic design. Uh, a nice simple feed, and the feed is ebonite, not plastic, as far as I can tell, at least. Simple filling system. A uh, system I've seen in more Indian pens, basically a, a built-in uh, syringe, so works very well. Put it in a bottle of ink, draw that up, do that a few times to expand uh, to expel some air, and you can fill this up almost all the way. So that that holds a nice amount of ink, uh, and you can also unscrew that. And you can use the pen as an eyedropper, which is what I've currently done with this pen, and I don't think the lighting is such that you can really see the ink move. Maybe a little bit, but. You can eyedropper it, a little bit of silicon grease is all that's required, and then you use the entire barrel, which is fairly large, so you can hold a nice amount of ink. Um, and what I even saw was that this little thing unscrews, and you can take the whole thing out, which is great if you want to grease the piston seal. So you can disassemble it, works well, uh, it's, it's nice, nice simple system. If you really want to, these pens can be posted, I'm just reassembling this, sorry. Uh, pens can be posted, and that works well. Even unposted, they, I would say they're large enough to be used unposted, but if you want to, you can post them very securely, and that works well. And then you have a larger pen, but not obscenely huge. It, it, I think the, the proportions work well when you post the pen. And that's it. So, what do I like about it? What do I not like about it? Well. Both of these pens rode well out of the box. I always give them a quick cleaning. I do that with every pen I, I uh, get. Works well. Out of the box, wrote well, no skipping, no issues. Very good flex performance. I will show you the flex nib in the writing sample. The other one's just a fine nib. It's pretty hard. There's nothing special about it, but I know you want to see the flex. Wrote fine. I have used a lot of flex recently um, because a lot of flex nibs came out. The Aurora nib, for example. and. I hate to say it, but 
for $32, I think this pen may have outperformed the Aurora pen simply because it railroads less, has good flow, um, it's flexier. Sorry, it's just the way it is. Uh, so that's that's very nice. Nice materials, nice range of, of uh, acrylics, uh, which is always fun. Uh, you can either go for something, I'm going to say a little professional because this looks, you know, it's dark, it's kind of simple, uh, or something a bit fancier and, and uh, more fun. It all works. Uh, and a nice nib range, uh, which, which is great. What do I not like about it? You know, I have to be honest, there isn't that much I can come up with. Uh, you have to look, I always try to do that, I, I, I look at a pen for what it is. Here you're talking about a pen that's less than $35. Uh, so you also have to expect something worth less than $35. I think it's well made. Tolerances are good. It's not that this, this clip ring rotates around. Threads are made nicely, there's no excess material sticking out. None, none, nothing is really sharp. I could say that this is a little sharp, but, but who does this to their pen all day? It's good. If I really have to nitpick, I would say maybe the barrel is a little long, just aesthetically. Maybe it would look better if it was about this size. But you know what? I don't really care. It works fine. You can post it. I think it's a great bargain. It's a well-made pen that works out of the box. Flex that works out of the box. You don't have to tinker with it. It just works out of the box, and that's it. So, I think it's very cool. High resolution pictures will be on the website, as well as pen measurements, sbrebrown.com. We need to see the pen in action. That's what's coming up next, writing sample. A very kind thank you to Kevin from FPR. I appreciate that you sent me new pens. I definitely had some fun playing with it. Guys, I hope this was useful so far, and um, I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, so here we go with these Himalaya pens. I am not going to use this nib. It's just a fine nib. It's it's pretty stiff and uh, it's not even inked up. But I mean, I have used it. It works fine. But it's just a fine nib. It's not so interesting, I think, as a flex nib is. So let's start with this. Forgive me, but I'm not going to write down Fountain Pen Revolution. I'm just going to put down FPR. Uh, and this is the. Himalaya and right now I'm not applying any pressure. Okay, so this is their flex nib. The ink is Noodler's Habanero of which I had a sample and just matched the finish of the pen pretty well I would say. Okay, we're going to do some regular writing. You can maybe able you may be able to see it's a, it's a wet writer. Noodler's typically also some some pretty wet inks so it works well there is some feedback as you write but it's not particularly bad fast writing I think I can honestly say that the skips were just me actually not touching the paper but it's a pretty, as I said, a pretty wet nib, so I don't think it, it's, it's that horrid. It, it performs pretty well. Okay. So as I said, no joke as to wetness. That's a very wet nib. But now here's the bit that you will want to see. How flexy is flexy in this context? Well, I'm just going to keep exerting pressure and let's see. <laughs> We're going to say whether we can spring this nib. That may be a bit too aggressive, but... Okay, now I have to stop because I got the feeling if I go any beyond that, I'm going to actually bend the nib. Um, that is pretty impressive. It starts with that and it goes to this, so I would say this ranges from a good fine to... I wouldn't even call that double broad. I have right here a Franklin Christoph double broad nib. So I would say that's at least triple broad, if not quadruple broad. And that's pretty impressive. If you're considering this is a $32 pen I'm holding in my hands, the Aurora uh, 88 with the flex nib that I reviewed could not do this. It could not keep up, it could not flex that much, and it didn't keep up so well. So let's see, now I'm really going to push it, see how it keeps up with flex writing. Boom. Hard flexing. 
and there you get the railroading. But I mean, this is insane. This is really pushing it hard and going really fast. If you tap it a little bit, okay, that was a little bit more ink than I expected, but that doesn't matter. If you go slower and don't push it so hard, I would say that's a pretty adequate performance, uh, given how fine the nib is usually. Pretty impressive. I, I really find that. Reverse writing, it's downright scratchy, but if you really need to go to that extra fine, then you can if you really have to. And that's all there's to it. So here we have nice affordable flex Himalaya Hope this was useful Kevin. Ooh, that's a horrid line, but Kevin. Thanks for sending me this. I appreciate it Hope this was useful guys, and uh, I'll gladly see you later Bye-bye Bye, -bye. Bye.